it is time to make some connections with the people right here in our community who make up the fabric of Korean society and hear their stories. Now, today's guest is going to talk to us about wine. It's been around for thousands of years, and people from all over the world enjoy it. And it has certainly captivated the taste buds of Koreans more and more over the years. And most recently, millennials, roughly those in their 20s and 30s, are really embracing this trend. But did you know that there's wine, quite a bit of wine, being made right here in Korea? Well, joining us for this conversation is Dominique Erk, a French-born farmer and winemaker who's making European-style natural wines in Chungju, North Chungcheong province. And he has joined us in the studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming into the studio and talking with us. Um, thank you, too. <laughs> so, um, Dominique, if I may call you Dominique. Yes, uh, sure. We mentioned that you are from France, and apparently you're not even, you're from the Alsace region, I understand. From Alsace, yes. Which is very famous for its wines. It's on the sort of the border area between France and Germany, too. Is yes. that right? Mm. I also enjoy the wine from there as well. But you were not a winemaker before you came out to Korea, as far as I know. You were a computer. computer programmer? Yes. Uh, in, um, during 25 years, I am uh, working in computer. Uh-huh. On, uh, I work for bank and make uh, loan uh, mm-hmm. uh, software. Uh-huh. Uh, but after 25 years, I feel a little boring <laughs> and stuck in my place. Right. And uh, then I think to back to my uh, family story. Mm. My grandfather was a winemaker. Oh, your, fa- your grandfather was? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other one was also a farmer. Mm-hmm. And uh, my, my parents also keep a little wine yard and continue to grow uh, wine trees. Mm-hmm. But they didn't make the wine by the, themselves at mm-hmm. this time. But when I am young, I play in the wine yard uh-huh. and also uh, I walk with mm-hmm. them a little bit. So uh, finally, when it's time to change my profession, I think, yes, it could be good to mm-hmm. back to my family uh, right. origin. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. You have a sort of your family background of making wine, but you're doing it here in Korea. What yeah. brought you to Korea? And then how did you decide to pursue some winemaking here in Korea as oh, well? Oh, it's, uh, it's a little story. But uh, finally, uh, when I decide to change my profession, I go back to France mm-hmm. and I make a diploma in winemaking on uh, on uh, wine, go, uh, wine tree growing. Then uh, I make some apprentice in some place uh-huh. in uh, Alsace and also in Val de Loire. Mm-hmm. And finally, I decide to have my wine wine yard and making wine by myself. And in France, right? In France. Uh-huh. But not, not, I don't have a specific idea at this okay. time. But finally, I think we have so many good winemakers in France. In France, and, sure. Uh, so maybe it could be interesting to do uh, in other places. As okay. my wife uh, is Korean, mm-hmm. we think together that it will be good to go in Korea and try to make uh, some good wine here. I see. And it could be Mm-hmm. Maybe more interesting, more challenging. <laughs> I'm sure it was quite challenging. So you said you went back to France. So you were working as a computer programmer here in Korea as well? Yes, for, right? for a few times. I yeah. see. Okay. So, but when you decided with your wife to maybe pursue winemaking here in Korea, as I mentioned to our listeners before, we have been making wine here in Korea for um, over 50 years now, but we've been yeah. making with... Various fruits, um, yes. kiwi, I believe, and even peaches and whatnot. I don't know if you would even consider that as proper wine. Does Korea actually have the suitable sort of conditions? You, what did you see that you saw that made you decide, mm, maybe we can do it here in Korea? Uh, but first, because uh, some people already make some wine right. there. And uh, also uh, in the latitude, it's the similar than in Europe. So, oh, is that right? Uh, geographically. Uh-huh. So the right uh, climate for yes, growing uh, grapes? White mm-hmm. climate. Mm-hmm. Maybe I didn't tell that. But, uh, <laughs> um, and also uh, they have some wine trees that are growing naturally in yes. Korea. We have the Mou wine tree. Moru? Mou. Uh-huh. It's not uh, Vitis vinifera, uh, normal 
wine tree right. that we use in Europe. Moru is the, the grapes that we just usually eat as a fruit, um, uh, I believe, in Korea. Moru, right? Isn't yes, yeah. mm-hmm. but also we can, you uh, can use it for v- wine. The wild one is very small and very uh, Sweet? tannin. Oh, so, uh, the tannin, so tannin. So which is kind of a little bit of a bitterish yes, kind of a taste, the dry bitter, taste. Um, yes. so. But it could be interesting so okay. for me, yeah. It looks like uh, the taste is like uh, blackberry, uh-huh. and, uh, very uh, fruit, uh, fruitness, but also a little bit biter. Right. So I decided to, to come there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I start by making some uh, apple wine, so mm. some s- what we call in French side, cidre. Uh, cidre so, or c- cider, yeah, yeah, which cider. is made from apple. Mm-hmm. Yes, make from apple. And uh, during this time, also study which kind of grape I can grow there mm-hmm. and which can uh, fit to mm-hmm. make uh, good wine. Did you think about maybe bringing in some grape varieties from your native Alsace region? Or did you uh, think you have to work with something Korean? Uh, in the beginning, I try the yeah. both, but finally it's difficult to grow mm-hmm. uh, European uh, mm-hmm. wine tree there. So I, I select some, some, but also I think it it's mm. could be interesting to be uh, to work Local. locally. Right. And uh, as many people already uh, make some tests mm-hmm. and try to do it, mm-hmm. uh, it's maybe more easy to, to start f- from that. Right. In particular, in Korea, though, why did you decide on Chungju as the place for your vineyard as well? I'm not, that, I'm not sure that it's very... F- Is it famous for their grapes or for or, or their apples, for that no, matter? It's it's uh, it's make more apple in in Chungju mm. than uh, wine tree. But uh, I'm not looking uh, really a place where many people already make uh, growing wine tree. Mm-hmm. But uh, a good place with a proper climate, and not too hot, not too cold. And also not so far from the, my customer because uh, I think the customer is more in the Seoul, in the Seoul area. area. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Chungju, it's uh, right in the center. Uh-huh. And in the beginning, we, we look around, mm. but finally uh, we decide to, to stay there right. and we plan to we buy a land uh, mm-hmm. over there and, okay. uh, to start to growing uh, mm-hmm. my one wine tree. <laughs> um, I have to say, I was kind of shocked at... To, at the fact that there are 200 sort of wineries. I mean, I put that into quotation marks because it seems like a lot of them are just farms, fruit farms, but then they also produce wine on the side as a kind of a side business or whatnot. And I'm not sure if that's the same with you. But farming itself, very labor intensive, a lot of physical work involved. And I, from what I know, from what I've gathered from movies and whatnot, winemaking is also very labor intensive as well. How do you and your wife manage to do all of this work? Oh, uh, yes, we, it's really intensive, but, um, Uh, what I what we do it's uh, me I work I make the wine and generally my wife is doing it. it. She's what? Drink it. it. She drinks it. it. Ah. Is that is that her job to yes. taste it and drink yeah, it and consume I, it? I, it's a joke, but uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, it's uh, almost uh, like this. I can I can do that job too. By yeah, the way, I can drink. Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, so it is a bit intensive, but I guess the the amount of wine that you produce, I guess yeah. it's you keep it within a limit that is manageable for the both of you. Yes, to mm-hmm. to, to work alone, and also I have some young people that come oh, sometimes do. to mm-hmm. help me. They are interesting to make wine, and right. they want to learn a little bit. Because there is a huge sort of um, interest, I think, in wine, especially among the younger people these days, as become. more accessible um, in the price range. Mm. And I know that um, there are lots of wine bars, but there's also, like even among those who enjoy their wine, there's even a newer trend, which is for natural wines. Mm. But for um, people even like myself, I'm not exactly sure what natural wine is. I know it's kind of uh, emerging as a global trend as well. Is it the same as organic wine or is it completely different? Um, What exactly is natural wine? Mm. The first definition is a uh, wine where we don't put any input. We, we have no input in, in... No additives, you mean? No, no additive, chemical no additives? No chemical. Or and no we chemicals. Try, mm-hmm. we, we, try, we can have a little bit of sulfate, maybe Sulfide, sometimes, uh-huh. but some people 
One, Don't count that as no, natural. No, mm -hmm. no, no sulfate too. But uh, also uh, for me, uh, what's uh, what's the best to express is um, is the expression of the nature. Mm -hmm. So that means you express the terroir. Mm -hmm. The, the, the earth. Yes, uh -huh. the, uh, the souls, the, the, the local mm -hmm. uh, place, mm -hmm. and also the climate, uh, and also the, the wine the grape, grape variety. Itself as well. Itself. So you're allowing all of that natural just um, taste to f um, be present in the wine and, and not masking it or not doing anything to it with these chemical additives. Yes, okay. yes, sure. And also, I, I, I try to follow uh, what's the wine... Uh, can be do so uh -huh. i don't try to to work too much on it mm -hmm. but uh, what I, grows naturally I, yes mean, grow, kind of? grow naturally mm -hmm. or also not to work too much mm -hmm. uh, during the fermentation and, uh, I see. so by example i don't add uh, yeast so yeast. I work, yes, you don't yeast. add yeast to yes. ferment it yeah. ah okay uh, i work with natural yeast so it's the yeast that come from the one yard from the one yard one itself yard. i see what grape do you use by the way what do you use moru or what sort of grape variety do you use because i've heard of chongsu i think that's a big sort of one that they use yes. um for white wine and that's also won some awards as well at some local wine festivals and competitions yes do you so, also so use in, that? in in korea they they make uh, wine with is uh, Campbell Early, MBA, Muscabele, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, Chonsu, Chonsu. Also. Mm -hmm. so Mo also, mm -hmm. Moru. Uh, Mo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, it could be interesting, but mm. we have to find the way to manage it mm. to make the, uh, the, the good wine. What grape are you using for your natural wine? Uh, I use, uh, currently I use Campbell Early okay. to make a sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. I use also a chonsu, mm -hmm. also for a sparkling wine. F uh, actually, it's not my one uh, grape. So right. uh, you use I a just variety planted of my wine yard, uh -huh. so they are still a little, I say still small. So uh, <laughs> I expect in a few years, mm -hmm. and I will have more to. to to complete all mm. my production. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I make some red wine, uh, steel, steel wine mm -hmm. uh, uh, with MBA, mm. uh, with a little uh, uh, more uh, mm -hmm. inside, 20%. Oh, very interesting. Um, this sort of embracing of wine and wine culture in Korea, it is still relatively new. But um, as I mentioned, we apparently have more than 150 or even I've seen 200 sort of wineries or wine yards. And I am curious because I've been to a couple of wine yards in um, the U.S. and they have these tours, you know, tasting tours. It's a whole experience to go there, look at the vineyards and also try all of the wines that are being produced on site. Do you also offer that kind of a tour or a tasting um, for your Consumers? Yes, for, for now we are we still little. Uh, it's a little business. So How many bottles do you produce a year, if you don't mind me uh, asking? With a cider, uh -huh. it's with six, cider? six thousand something like this. Okay, uh, but six thousand. I, I, mm -hmm. I hope to to expand the part of uh, wine. The wine, yeah. okay. And um, do you have like a tasting sort of tour? Or? Uh, what we do for now, it's uh, we open the winery uh, once times a month mm -hmm. for uh, tasting. Just once a month. Once okay. a month, on maybe uh, if some people are interested. Because I think yeah, man, uh, many of our we, listeners we, might we be can, interested we, as well. We can have an appointment or uh -huh. something like this. And we plan to build one winery, mm -hmm. so maybe we will be more... Um, uh, it will fit It'll more expand. the, yeah. uh, can offer the more? place to, to receive people. Mm -hmm. uh, and what has the response been? Because... Um, Natural wine does taste a little bit different, I think, from regular sort of wine. And also cider might be not that familiar with sort of regular Korean consumers as well. What has the reaction been to your wines? Uh, as you told, many people know now, know uh, now okay. the, the natural wine. So they, they know what they expect. And also, I think the, the people that uh, who like the natural wine, want to have different experience, mm. different testing. So sometimes they don't like it or 
sometimes they like right. it, but I think it's important to open your man, your mind, uh -huh. and to to taste different aroma, mm -hmm. flavor, and also different uh, wine uh, grape. Mm. So uh, the, the and also the method of the winemaking could impact uh, the taste. If there are so many different types of wines and um, natural wine versus organic wine and then the, sort of the regular wines, what, in your opinion, makes a great wine then? Uh, first at all, I think it's if you enjoy the wine, it's a great it's wine. It's a great and wine, regardless uh, of the price or whatnot. Yes, uh -huh. and also if you, after the first glass, you, you want to take a second one. Mm -hmm. I think... If you think about it and you want to... Yes, uh -huh. if you have a one uh, glass and you want the second, I think it's a great wine. Uh, so any wine that makes you want more of it is a great wine. For me, mm -hmm. uh, That make a lot of uh, great wine uh, uh -huh. maybe available. Uh, Now, I know in France, um, wine drinking, and it's definitely a part of your culture. You learn the culture of drinking wine um, maybe from a young age or you're kind of surrounded by it. Still relatively new here in Korea. Um, some of our listeners might not have really had a chance to try wine. What would your advice be for them who are maybe now interested in trying out some wine? How should they start? Uh, I, I think it's a, a question of curiosity. So mm -hmm. you should try. I, I think the, the first is try it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you like it, you don't like it, but make your test. Mm -hmm. I, I think you should uh, open. And it, it's not really a question of price, I think. Okay. Because a few years ago, uh, wine uh, is considered uh, in Korea like... Uh, A gift mm -hmm. that uh, quite expensive, on, uh, very expensive, and you have to buy it for special occasion. But finally, people don't really enjoy it. Right. But now I think I see young people mm -hmm. buy a bottle for doing at home with friends at the park. And, yes, uh -huh. it's not anymore formal, mm. so it's uh, very open. I mm. think. Yes. So you don't see a major. Any difference, maybe, then, in the wine sort of consuming culture between here and France? Uh, Is there any difference? No. Because, no, for no. instance, I remember a long time ago, about 10 or 15 years ago, um, we would do k o m b e like we would, you know, and then one shot with our yeah. wine glasses. Mm. Not so much nowadays, I think. Not so much, yes. <laughs> do you see any But sort of cultural I, I, I differences? I still see some people that uh, drink it one shot. <laughs> in one shot. Uh, I understand that because it's finale, but uh, I think it's uh, it changes, uh, it changes, uh, especially with young people. Uh, mm -hmm. So they enjoy the taste and to try different wine. It's why uh, natural wine is working so well now mm -hmm. because uh, many natural wine is imported from Europe or That's true. all around the world, but. Um, They are different, and people like to test different kinds and mm -hmm. renew uh, what they're doing. Mm. How can we access your natural wines, by the way? Do we have to go to your winery? Uh, you, you can go to my winery, uh -huh. but also we sell it uh, on the internet. Ah, uh, is that in, right? Uh, yes, okay. in uh, Never Store. Do you have any plans to maybe sell your wine outside the country, maybe import it or export it to France? When, do you think uh, there'll ever be a day when you do that? Um, you, you know, my, uh, my production is very small, uh -huh. so uh, I target in Korea first. Uh -huh. and, uh, but w what will be e n j o y for me, it's maybe to, to have some foreign people that come in Korea mm -hmm. to taste the Korean wine. Mm -hmm. That will be uh, great. That's I your think. goal for now. And then yeah. maybe one day in the future when you um, scale yeah. up, you can maybe export yes, back maybe, to us. Uh, um, <laughs> if we can make Uh, put uh, Korea in the wine uh, map, ma map mm -hmm. it's, it's really big of it. That would be a major feat as well. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Dominique Eric. I know that you had to travel quite a bit to join us this morning, but thank you very much, and I wish you the best in your business. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much.